God does not listen to lost people. It's an important uh, little study here. John chapter 9. There's only one prayer that God is interested in coming from a lost man or woman, and that is the prayer to be saved. Um, you can call upon the name of the Lord in whatever way you want. There is no specific prayer that, you know, like what the Catholic Church would teach or some kind of thing, you know, my Sunday missile or something. Um, you know, some uh, Holy Mary, you know, Mother of Grace and whatever. No, there isn't anything like that. You just call upon the Lord. You understand what salvation is. You know who has it. And so you call the guy that has salvation and explain your situation to him and ask him for salvation. <laughs> it's simple. I mean, all these uh, free gracer, hyper, you know, whatever, dispensational, um, there's a lot of nuts out there. Gnostics is what they are. And they come up with this thing of you just imagine, uh, you just believe this, the gospel in here. You don't even have to talk to God and, you know, it's not even logical. I mean, you know, hey, you have a bill to pay here. There's a, been a problem with your bill. Um, the, you have to get in touch with the bank. Ugh, there, I just believe that they took care of it. You know, no, go call them. You know, I have to keep saying this over and over again because there's a lot of heretics out there. Uh, you, just, you just believe. You don't have to call upon the Lord. Uh, no, that's not true. But uh, let's start out here in John chapter 9, verse 31. And uh, we'll see about this. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. So lost versus saved there. God heareth not sinners. But if you be a worshiper of God um, and do his will, then he'll hear you. Okay? And of course, this is pre-crucifixion. I get it. Doctrinally, it's in the Old Testament. I get that. But we'll see this theme repeated over and over again, that God does not hear uh, lost people. 1 Peter chapter 3, go over there next. Um, you know, I've seen these things all the time. They have prayer breakfasts and whatever else, you know. And, and you, know, you get this, this weird philosophical thing. Well, is it better to have a country that at least acknowledges God, um, even though they might not be saved, but is it better to have some acknowledgement of God is that better than no acknowledgement of God? You know, some professing religious stuff or just completely atheistic communism or something like that. And I, I understand that. But, you know, the scriptures teach what they teach. And you can't pervert the scriptures to try to make people feel more comfortable. You know, and you get these people and they're lost and they'll, and, you know, they say, oh, I'll say a little prayer for you. Don't waste your time. God heareth not sinners. Here's another one, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. See the distinction. God is a God of distinction. There are certain things that you have to understand about the Bible, and one of those is that God is a God of distinction. There's not a whole lot of gray area with God. Okay, right or wrong, lost or saved, Heaven or hell. That simple. God's not some kind of confused being up there that's not really made up his mind yet. And he's you know, just kind of a whatever. No, that's not God. <clears throat> the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. That should be a real comfort to you when you think about that. That his eyes are over the righteous. Looking down from heaven and he's watching. Hmm. And his ears are open unto their prayers. That's a pretty encouraging thing to think about. That the God who created the world and everything else out there, the God of all creation, he's not too busy to listen to you. Always remember that. But if you're lost, you don't have that promise. Psalm 66. Well, I'll just give God a call when I need him. I don't really need him right now. I don't. I'm enjoying life. I don't really, you know, have that much that I'm worried about. So I'll just kind of give God a call when, you know, just when I feel like it. When it comes into my mind, you know, I'll just, oh, yeah, that, that God or whatever. Yeah, let me give him a call quick. No, it doesn't work that way. Psalm 66, verse 16 through 20. Let's read that. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. Um. Uh, <clears throat> 
I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me, he hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Now, of course, you have David being in the Old Testament. Again, I get that. Dispensationally, it's not the same thing it's written to a Christian in the New Testament. But there's the sure mercies of David. There's the imputation, God's righteousness imputed to David. So there are some things there. If you get out of fellowship with the Lord because you're sinning, you're living a life of sin, um, it's not that God won't hear your prayer in the New Testament, but uh, he's not going to be very quick to answer. Okay, You're probably going to get some chastening rather than some answers to your prayer. Okay, The Lord's going to have to do some things about that. Um, you don't want to mess around with sin. Isaiah chapter 1. You see, see, what's the, the significance of you talking about this right now, Brother Brian? Well, very simple, because you see, we're going into a time period where this nation is going to be judged, and it's coming very quickly. And what you're going to have is you're going to have a lot of lost people. Right now, they don't need Jesus. Right now, it's just kind of, eh, whatever, that Jesus stuff. Keep your Bible away from me and whatever. Again, like I said earlier, I'll, I'll call for him when I need him. Um, but the problem is, when that time comes, if you've been rejecting the Lord for many years, God won't listen. Let's read about it. Um, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 10. Hear the word of the Lord, ye rulers of Sodom. Give ear unto the law of our God, ye people of Gomorrah. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. And I delight not in the blood of bullocks, or of lambs, or of he-goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hands to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations, incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them, and when ye spread forth... Your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash you, make you clean, put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do well, seek judgment, relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall eat the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Hmm. If ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. You know, I said this in another one of my videos not long ago, and it's a good quote from Bob Jones Sr., and he said, War is God's judgment on sin here. Hell is God's judgment on sin hereafter. Very good statement. Um, you go all throughout the Old Testament. The things that are written aforetime are written for our learning. Paul wrote about that. All through the Old Testament, and you see this thing time and time again, where God brings a foreign nation upon Israel as punishment. And they come in and they're just going through and they're just slaying them with the sword and running them through. Even sometimes when Israel is going out to battle, they're not right with God. There's sin in the camp. There's other issues. And, they're, and the Lord just simply says, I'm, I'm not going to be for you right now. And they're, the day before, they're out there and they're winning and they're glor, you know, praising the Lord and giving glory to God and everything. And then there's sin in the camp. And the next day they go out into battle and all of a sudden there's another guy dropping dead and there's another one. And what's going on? There's sin there. God doesn't care. And I'll tell you right now, um, the worship that goes on in these church buildings, I think God feels much the same way as what he wrote to the Jews there in the book of Isaiah. I hate it. I can't, my soul abhors it. I, oh, I, don't, even, I don't want to hear your prayers. I don't want to hear your songs that you're singing, this fleshly modern CCM stuff. It's away with it. It's an abomination to me. 
And those same people are going to be the ones that are going to say, you know, bad things will start to happen to America. Let's pray. Oh, let's have a time of prayer. God's not listening. He's not going to listen to these people. And um, you say, well, praise Lord, brother. That's good. I, I know he'll listen to me because I'm saved. I'm born again. That's good. Praise the Lord. But do you have the guts to tell lost people that uh, God's not listening to you? Do you have the guts to tell that to uh, church people? Hmm. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16. You know, it's a difficult thing to be a Bible believer, right? Um, because God will call you into action. God will put you into situations where you can't keep quiet. Somebody directly looks at you right in the face and they say, what do you think about this? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was just going to be kind of quiet and not really say anything here. I didn't want to rock the boat or make a problem. No. God will eventually put you in a situation where you get to confess Him as your Lord and Savior and where you get to defend the Bible and not be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation. Remember like Jesus warned about? He'll put you right there and he'll say, okay, speak for me. Oh, there's all this death and everything else. Oh, God, please help us. Could you pray with us? Why don't you join us in prayer? You're a Christian too, right? I mean, you're one of those weird Bible believers, but could you please help us here in prayer? No, I can't join with you. What? You're not willing to pray? No, I'm willing to pray. I just can't pray with you. God heareth not sinners. Good community relations. Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 16 through 20. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Now he's here's this is something that's very interesting because it's not just God doesn't hear sinners, but you know what? It gets to the point where a nation is so wicked and the people are so evil that if you as a saved person not a Christian in context, I get it, but instruction and in righteousness here. God says, if you pray to me for these wicked people out here, for me to spare this nation, I won't listen to you. Hmm. Verse 17, Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. If you've never seen this verse before, the uh, Roman Catholics call Mary the queen of heaven. Why? Because they're ancient pagans. That's all. Uh, Mary's never called the queen of heaven in the New Testament. Interesting little thing there. And to pour out drink offerings on two other gods, that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man, and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. I'm bringing all this evil to this nation. Hey, you know what? Look at that. What a, I don't even remember what the number what is now. 18 million or something uh, poultry, you know, fowls, uh, chickens, and turkeys, and all this other stuff that's been slaughtered because of the bird flu danger. Uh, look at all the, the cattle that have been slaughtered. Look at all this. Look at all that. This food factory blew up. This refinery's blown up. All these other things. Hmm. It shall burn and shall not be quenched. Huh. Uh, the Palestine interesting name there in Ohio and the train derails and it's all this toxic chemicals and everything. I literally saw just a thing on YouTube here, I think yesterday, some chocolate factory, candy factory in Pennsylvania blew up. A violent explosion that, you know, CCTV camera, you know, they caught the thing. You know, candy factory? I think they're just blowing up and burning and, and it shall, shall not be quenched. Are you praying for the lost people that are there? Because if you are, you need to stop. Oh, but God, please. 
Lord, let's pray for the families. I just want to pray for the families of the people out there. And the Lord says, uh, do you realize what they're doing? Are you so out of it that you can't tell that I'm judging this nation? Why are you praying for me to stop judging this nation that's done so much wickedness? Can't you read what I did to Israel in the Old Testament? Don't you get it? You know what you need to pray? Brother, sister, truly born again believer, you know what you need to pray? God, please protect me. Protect my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. And if there's somebody that actually wants to be born again, genuinely saved, truly saved, not a false convert, then Lord, please cross our paths. Help us to meet. And please protect that person. But these wicked people out here watching uh, television shows, I don't even need to name any and whatever else, television shows and mocking Jesus Christ, cheering as Ten Commandment monuments are taken out of this country, sodomite rallies, pride rallies, all this different stuff going on in this nation. And all of a sudden, God says, okay, I've had enough. <clears throat> and he hits them. Time for punishment. Time for judgment. <clears throat> like that. And the Christians go, whoa, wait, God, wait. Please let me pray for these people. Here, let's join. Let's get all, a whole bunch of lost people together here at work and whatever else. I mean, that'd be a good one. What if the Lord puts you in that situation? Hey, we're going to have a moment of prayer here. Everybody, let's hold hands here. Let's all pray, you know, for this, for the victims of whatever things come in the future. There'll be plenty of those. Let's all pray. And you say, I, I can't do that. I'm sorry. God heareth not sinners. You're a bunch of sinners here. I can't pray with you. I'm sorry. I have to step out. Lord might put that on you. Well, could you at least pray for them? No, I can't do that either. Their time has come. The number is up. The game is over that they were playing. You know, um, I felled a few trees in my day um, and um, in logging and things and just cutting firewood. And I mean, I don't know, thousands and thousands of trees. <laughs> and I mean that, I'm not just faking that. Um, lots of trees. And uh, you know the one thing that I'm always really careful about? Stay away from the area where it's going to hit. Make sure that my son and my dog and my, my wife uh, stand back that way. Hold on to Luther's collar there. Don't let him go. Because when this tree goes down, I don't want anybody to be where it's going to hit. And when this nation goes down, I don't want any of you to be where God's judgment hits. But the lost world, whatever. Oh, you have no love, Brian. Yes, I do. I love the Word of God. I love my wife. I love my brothers and sisters in Christ out there. But I have no love or patience for people that have rejected the Lord all their life. And then they have the nerve to complain when He judges them. No love. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 11 through 14. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. And though they shall cry unto me, I will not hearken unto them. I look at this debt bubble that's just growing all the time, and I see that, you know, this all the stuff that's going on, and people just won't stop spending. And I'm thinking, do you realize how big of a problem this is? I mean, we buy little Tyson chicken legs for our dog that we make for him. It was $4 and something about a month ago for the pack of the family pack or whatever of chicken legs. Not very expensive or whatever else. I was in a store yesterday. It was $9 and some odd cents. That's over 100% increase. That's hyperinflation. Okay? 
I'm seeing older people and they're just kind of walking around and they're, they have barely any food in their grocery cart and they're looking really bad. And I'm thinking, oh boy, heard an older woman say to another woman, she said, oh, hi there. How you doing? And she said, I'm not doing good at all. And she just kept on walking. Judgment is here. Judgment is happening. And yet, how many people are even awake? The news media said everything's getting better. The news media says it's fine. We're, we're in a robust economy. <laughs> okay, you say, what's going on there? Um, I will bring evil upon them, which they shall not be able to escape. You know, had God judged the economy years ago, people would have had more money. They would have. I mean, a, a weird little thing we like to do, we'll go into the bank and the ATM thing there, you know, and we'll go and check our account balance or get money out or something. And we, they have a trash can and people just take their ATM receipt and they just throw it right in the trash. And my son and I will go and we'll look down in there. You know, we're not digging through the trash or anything, but we'll look and see what's on top. I've seen people, they take $20 out of their bank account. They have five cents left. No joke. I've seen people take $20 out. There's nothing left. I've seen people take, you know, they'll take a little bit of money out, you know, $100, $200 in the bank. They've spent themselves into oblivion now, into a desperate situation, maybe not oblivion, but they, they spend, spend just all of their money, they get all this debt and everything else, just thinking that things are getting better. The economy's never been better. It's a strong, robust economy, like Jerome Powell and what's her name, Yellen or whatever, Janet Yellen. They both came out and said that, strong, robust economy at the last Federal Reserve meeting here in March, 2023. Huh? <laughs> they're liars. But why is God allowing this to happen? Because he's getting people to the point where there will be no solution. Homeless population, I think I heard a year or two ago, it was one in 500 Americans is now homeless. Uh, what's it going to be by the end of this year? By the end of next year? How about that military website that I did a report on, on? It's here on YouTube. You can check it out on my channel. Military predicts a huge loss of life by 2025. 75% reduction in the population of America. How about that? God is bringing destruction to this nation. Don't stand in his way with your prayers. Don't pray for the lost. And if you see lost people praying, don't join with them. And you have to have enough guts and enough nerve, brethren, to tell the truth. You have lost relatives and they say, well, I'll pray a little prayer. Just say, don't bother. God won't hear it. And share with them the scriptures that you're learning about in this study. Go back through. Write the scriptures down so that you have them. Highlight them like I've done in mine. Highlight it. Put it there. You know, Whatever. So that you can share it with people. Verse 12. Then shall the cities of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem go and cry unto the gods unto whom they offer incense, but they shall not save them at all in the time of their trouble. For according to the number of the, thy cities were thy gods, O Judah, and according to the number of the streets of Jerusalem, have yet have ye set up altars to that shameful thing, even altars to, the, to burn incense unto Baal? <clears throat> Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them, for I will not hear them in the time of, that they cry unto me for their trouble. Again, the Lord's saying, don't pray for these people. Pray for America. Oh, please pray for pe people here in America. No, don't do it. I mean, unless you know somebody that's really looking for truth and very fervent, and they're not quite piecing the gospel together yet, okay, maybe pray for them, but the vast majority of the people, no way. Don't pray for them. One other place to go to yet, Ezekiel chapter 8. I mean, you have to understand, brethren. I mean, I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, Christianity in the 20th century was, was mostly marketing. The hyper soul winning movement, get out there, win souls, win souls, win souls, invite them to church, get them in here. We need to have revival meetings. We need to bring people in no matter what the call. It was all marketing. Okay. The church buildings, there weren't that many in the 1800s, right? In terms of, I mean, people were meeting in little 
meeting houses or sheds or whatever. They were not very fancy, hard wooden benches, wooden floors, uh, wood stove for heat or something like that. And study it. It's history. I'm not making it up. Yes, there were some elaborate church buildings, but not that many. But then you get into the late 1800s with all the big revivalism, and then they electrified the preaching, made it into radio broadcasts, and oh boy, sky's the limit. And all of a sudden now it's all about this huge marketing thing. They started building church buildings everywhere. They started to put universities in and seminaries and all the other stuff. And that whole thing is just this huge weight of guilt that's just smashed down on your head if you're saved. And when's the last time you've won a soul to the Lord? Have you gone to seminary? Are you? Do you have a degree, an earned degree and whatever else? And this, that stuff just makes you feel guilty if you're not you know, leading a whole bunch of people to the Lord. Uh, that's not your job, brethren. Okay? It's not. It's not some kind of a thing where you have to force people into salvation and whatever else. God will set it up. Pray for the Lord to cross your paths with lost people. It's up to Him. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about, I have planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Plant seeds. Go out there. Do tracting. Witness to people in whatever way you can. But saving their soul is not your job. That's up to God. Oh, well, he that winneth souls is wise. Yeah, look at the context. It's in the Old Testament. It's not talking about preaching the gospel. It's talking about having a winning personality. That's all it means. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 16 through 18. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men, which with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. It's like Catholic priests do today. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence, and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Look at a bunch of hypocrites in this church building here, this temple of God, and they're worshiping the sun of the east, they're Baal worshippers, and yet they're going out and they're holy and righteous and whatever else. What's God say? Verse 18, Therefore will I also deal in fury, mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity, and though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet... Will I not hear them? Boom. There you go. Do not feel bad for these people. Have no sympathy for them. They deserve what's coming. Oh, God's not willing that any should perish. Yes, but that all should come to repentance. Remember that, that two aspects there. God wants to save people. Whosoever will, let him come. But if you reject, then you go to hell. Broad is the way which leadeth to destruction, and many there be that which go in thereat. That's just the reality of it. So, going forward, we're going to start to see some major stuff, I believe. Um, just looking at things and seeing things. and um, Again, to explain what I do in this ministry, um, I do not want to be just a regurgitator of Peter Ruckman. I learned a lot from this man, but he's not my God. He's not, you know, some kind of a thing of, uh, I'm a graduate of PBI and I have to uh, really represent my school or something. Uh, no. I want to be my own man. I need to do my own research into things. I have questions. And I want to be able to make sense of things when I preach the Word of God to people. I want to be able to profit you as a pastor. As a preacher, I should say. I don't really consider myself a pastor, but, you know, the whole thing there. Um, I want to educate people. And so a lot of my day is spent in research. And now that I have a son, he's also, I have to be teaching him. Um, and so that's just, it's a lot of what takes up my time. But uh, as time goes by and I see this nation and I see... The economic stuff is probably one of the bigger things. Uh, yeah, World War III, but I um, actually just heard literally a interview of a colonel, retired colonel in the Army, retired Army, Army colonel, say it that way, and he said that America basically has 
spent itself into not being able to wage another war. You know, you take Russia, Russia, what were they doing all the years that we were fighting our useless wars? What was Russia doing uh, during the uh, Korean War and the Vietnam War? And, you know, Desert Storm, I think it was the first one in Operation Ar Iraqi Freedom and the Afghanistan debacle. <sighs> you know, just let's take over trillions of dollars of equipment and then just leave it. <laughs> That's brilliant. Um, what were they doing? Oh, I don't know, just sitting there, staying out of debt. Russia's a little a couple hundred billion into debt or whatever else, and we're 31 trillion plus, heading towards 32 trillion. Um, that's not going to last. You can't just keep saying we'll go to war and print up money to be able to make the war effort happen. Uh, it doesn't work. Pretty soon you have a debt crisis. And right now, it's this, you know, America's kind of like the the water, you know, and they're going down onto the water and when they come back up, <gasps> And it, that's what we're seeing. Down under the water, back up. Down under the water, back up. And eventually, uh, their lungs are going to start to fill up with water. And this nation is going to sink. But uh, you don't have to be part of that, so to speak. If you're righteous, if you are born again, then um, you can be praying for your own situation, for each other. Let's pray for each other. Hold each other up in prayer. But the lost people, they've had their opportunity. Um, it's another thing people don't quite get because, you know, there's a time where God says, okay, um, you've had your chance. Um, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm not going to heal your land. I'm not going to come in there and make everything better. You've rejected me time and time again. So, uh, just another little challenge here, brethren, because as we're going into this whole thing, the banks are collapsing. Um, I'm seeing that. Uh, I mean, it's just crazy. You had Silicon Valley Bank, and then you had, uh, what, First Republic Credit Suisse. They're, and now they're saying Deutsche Bank, you know, as of, what is today, the 30th, 30th of March, um, 2023. And um, as of today... <laughs> Deutsche Bank might have collapsed, but the American media just won't report on it or something. But as of today, they still haven't collapsed. Uh, we'll see how long that lasts. But I heard of Charles Schwab, the, I think, investment firm or something. There's starting to be some problems there. And, and it's kind of, oh, let's, you know, everything's fine. Let's not look at this. And let's not look at that. Um, and all of a sudden, everything's just going to start to go boom, boom, boom. And there's going to be fighting. I mean, look at some of the stuff going on in these cities. Uh, just horrifying. The people on drugs are just, you know, I can't do it because if I bent down the whole way, you wouldn't see me on camera. But, you know, these people just out of it and, and you know, climbing up on traffic lights and guys going through the store, pouring milk on themselves and grabbing things off the store shelves and, you know, bizarre, weird stuff that's going on in this country. And people, lost people are going to start praying. God, please help us. Um, no. If you want to get saved, yeah, okay, then he can help you. But uh, God's not going to hear the prayers of sinners. And let's not uh, perpetuate that lie. Um, that, uh, oh yeah, just pray that, you know, I'll, I'll be praying for your situation. No, don't pray for lost people. If they have no desire for salvation... I'm sorry, I can't pray for you. Hey, you know, I'm, I just lost my job. I'm going to be homeless. Please pray for me. I can't. Why? Because the Bible says I'm not supposed to. Are you saved? No, I'm not saved. I'm not a Christian. I'm not into that religious stuff. But, you know, hey, I know you're saved and I'd like you to pray for me. I can't do that. Sorry. Well, you know, as good Christians, we should be praying for people. Then you're going against the scriptures. Just that simple. So, um, please do not let the emotions of this nation, going through this nation collapsing, do not let that cloud your understanding of the scriptures. Right? This nation has turned against God. God is going to destroy this nation. Don't get in his way. So that is going to be it, it for this study. Thank you very much for watching. And I have some good studies coming up, but uh, 
things have been um, rather busy. And um, so I really do appreciate it, everybody for your prayers out there. Thank you for your support of the ministry. Um, that always um, is a great blessing to us. And we've had different uh, brethren send us things in the mail. We got a really nice package in the mail today with some natural health type of stuff and, and a nice letter and, and um, really appreciate that. So I didn't even get a chance to read the letter yet. Um, but I will be doing that after I'm done with these studies. So I just wanted to get this thing out. But um, please do keep us in your prayers. And uh, I look forward to coming out with some of the more detailed studies that I have that I'm, I've been doing the research for. I'm not going to say what they are yet. We have to wait and see. But it's some really good stuff. So um, we'll see you in the next video.